for a common man what is a smart city i think smart city is a way of life uh, which improves the quality of life of aam aadmi it's a way in which the government has control all of all the natural resources and distributes it where it is needed appropriately so basically it's all to do with the aam aadmi and making his life simple so if you see electricity he wants 100% electricity 24 by 7 water he wants 100% water 24 by 7 or effective distribution so if the city doesn't have 100% water for everyone so there has to be an effective distribution of the water so that everybody equitably gets it everybody gets it to what they are happy to you know uh, pay for uh, then transportation he wants to go reach his place of uh, destination in the fastest possible way in a more sustainable way without polluting the environment <coughs> he wants to have a lifestyle where he doesn't need to run after services the services are available at a touch of a button and uh, he needs to just think and there is somebody in the government or the service provider who provides it at a fee that's a smart city yeah. so does a smart city mean ease of living i think uh, it is if you want to put it a little bit in a simplistic way ease of living Uh, we call it quality of life. Um, uh, the difference is ease of living is you can always pay for it. Quality of life is a basic infrastructure which has risen up so much that you get time to work, you get time to play. You don't bother about uh, basic infrastructure. You don't bother that you know the electricity has broken down and it will take ten days for the connection to come up. It is the government's job to give you twenty-four by seven uninterrupted interrupted power. What it means is that it, they should have alternate grids. They should have alternate uh, mechanism to provide the electricity to you within a minute. So that means that the government has to invest, or the private electricity discom supplier has to invest in a smart grid, yeah. which means that you know one connection goes to cut. There's another connection parallel lying at redundant. Could you please elaborate the non-infrastructure part in a smart city? Right now we are catching the elephant in different ways. Uh, there is a hardware, there is a technology. Uh, it's the hardware which is important. But what is more important right now, because we are leapfrogging from a uh, 50-year-old infrastructure to something which is modern, is uh, technology has improved. Uh, management system of these infrastructure has improved to make these uh, controllable at one point to do uh, to manage and. distribute the resources efficiently uh, earlier you know if you recall when you were growing up uh, the the uh, the water vehicle will come in yeah. they will open the taps and they will go today it can be done under uh, press of a button so if they want to give you 20 liters of water in a day they'll press a button and you'll get that supply so that technology is being layered on infrastructure so we, since we are building basic infrastructure better do it well that's the first part of it the second part of it is uh, it's not possible without people yeah. the people who are the users of it have to demand it have to use it and have to need it enough so that we go and invest and 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 obviously these all comes at a cost the cost is to be recovered so either it goes in taxes or in property taxes or in user fees but at the end of the day we don't want an infrastructure we don't need we want an infrastructure which we need we value which saves our time which gives us resources and that's the, the that's the way it is so at the end of the day uh, what we are talking now is basic hardware infrastructure and a digital infrastructure what is going to happen then is executing it and operating it and maintaining it at the least possible price and still giving everybody the resources they need the i think a lot of wastage happens yeah. in resources the wastage will reduce a lot how will we make our people smarter you don't need to make people smart people are smart yeah. i think they need to believe that what is happening is good for them yeah. that has to be demonstrated so unless so you can come and, and you see there is a short term and a long term cost to smartness so if you want to make a, you know autobahn it's a very expensive proposition you may not be ready for it you don't need a 16 lane autobahn but you can do a two lane autobahn right so i think i i have great respect for people's intelligence and i think people will rise up whenever this time this time when we were doing the smart city competition uh, in some cities 40% of the people responded in every city at least 15% of the people responded these are young people they are very intelligent they are super smart they are they are seeing this infrastructure in every places so they are saying why not what's the cost tell us till now the government had not got in its mindset that yes we will do it they were all telling cost 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 now we are saying yes the cost is there tell us we are willing to pay so that's the change so i think the india is moving because the citizens are smart how would smart city project help indian real estate sector 
I think two three ways uh, which I keep telling and real estate I think is more of a pet subject for me. So I'll keep it short. Yeah. Uh, in my belief, uh, what smart city does is work on basic core infrastructure. It reduces uh, the imbalance in location. You see, uh, real estate prices are all subject to what infrastructure is provided, what quality of life is provided, what in uh, you know how easy it is to commute, where the jobs are, and how much time it takes. So, if you are living closer to the central heart of the business district, it will be expensive. If you are looking as living in a suburb, it will be cheap. Now, the difference in price is also if you add up to the commuting time and the you know the inconvenience of reaching it adds up so it usually literally balances most of the time sometimes it may be asymmetric but most of the time it balances what smart city is going to do it is going to make a pleasure for you to reach from one location to another location simple things like if you're in delhi and you've been here say 20 years you will realize that 20 years back we didn't have the ring road and it was so inconvenient to reach one location because you had to pass through delhi in various ways and reach today there is a ring road and this ring road takes you from one end of the other. You don't go to the arterial roads until you want to go to your last mile. That has reduced that entire ring road you can go in two hours or two and a half hours. That is infrastructure. That makes Delhi much, much more convenient for people to live in. And that makes Delhi smaller. It's not like you have to go through three hours of traffic. You just know that, you know, one hour, anywhere, one hour you can reach and the last mile may be the traffic. This is a free flowing, no uh, traffic light uh, road and that is exactly what infrastructure has to do. Your take on the private sector's role in the smart city project? See, I think private sector is always willing where there is money. Private sector is willing to work in thin margins. Uh, private sector is willing to work in long term projects. I think what is needed is a model and some assurance. You see, India has uh, traditionally had a lot of uh, positive steps and then flip-flop. You make a positive step, you make a project model and then you flip-flop. Either you don't pay or you don't complete or you, you know, in populism tell we will remove the toll in this space for whatever reason. Maybe sometimes they say that the toll is expired and everybody has earned the money, which is the right thing to do. But there are, uh, you know, those kind of things which makes the private sector jittery. I have been speaking to private people and they are really delighted to have this. Their only point is, is our money secure? How do we get our money back? What is the alternate mechanism if things don't happen because of our mistake? See, they are happy to take their mistake. So I think that model of win-win has to happen. So if India has to reach a level where you know all this infrastructure gets done, many of it the user will pay and be willing to pay. You know, you look at a state or a city where there is a power cut for five hours and the children are going to study and give exams which parent will not pay a little bit of electricity fees if they get power in that five hours. And it doesn't take much, uh, you know, we don't need to produce much, we just need to redistribute it, we need to, you know, share it well, and we need to collect all the electricity bills. These are the three things. So everybody will be happy to pay for electricity bill if you guarantee them power. Obviously nominal, obviously there's a real cost of things, you don't need to inflate it, and that's the role of the government, to ensure that the prices are at rational and real levels. And then, you know, some projects may be a little bit expensive in the front and that is why the government has to st step up and see how to make that successful for a private guy, or how to make it viable for a private guy, either by, you know, deferring some costs or deferring some taxes or, you know, for some period doing some form of uh, bridge funding, etc. Bhubaneswar tops the first list of smart cities. How do you see Bhubaneswar's prospects? So we supported Bhubaneswar, so I must tell you that. And we are delighted. Uh, we've got some brilliant... Uh, People working behind it, uh, the commissioner there does a brilliant job. Vice commissioner, uh, the vice chairman of BDA is just hands on on it, and uh, it'll come up well. So there is no doubt about it that most of the projects will be implemented. And I think one of the reasons uh, uh, they may have topped the list is because of the quality of the projects. Most of the projects are implementable, and definitely they are. Uh, going to have an impact on the citizens. You know, they will decongest this place, it will provide alternate housing, it will provide, uh, you know, it will uplift the uh, people in that place. Uh, I, I have great hopes on uh, all the top 20, for that matter, uh, doing something good. Uh, I think that the government is following a policy of a lighthouse effect, which means that they have to get role models which people will follow. And these top 20 had projects which could be if successful, implementable. And that's, I think, the key to the success, to implement successful things. Will home prices rise 
in and around the smart cities? I think uh, you'll have to look at it this way. There will be... Uh, so, where I am seeing when the infrastructure is laid in city centers, whether it is transportation or something, the only way these can be funded is by some form of taxes or says on nearby places which take advantage. So, for example, if I have a station here and I have six office buildings and they get connected to the station, they're getting an advantage. They'll be charging higher rent because you can walk to the office without walking in the street. That means they will have a higher price. So, there is a tax which the government will collect for that. So, I don't think home costs will improve. In fact, what will happen is it will be much more convenient for you to stay in the peripheral location and take 20 minutes. So today you're taking one hour 20 minutes to travel to the city. You'll take 20 minutes because there is the communication infrastructure and the transportation infrastructure which has come in quite well. Tomorrow you don't even need to come to office because you can sit at your home and the, the, inter, uh, the digital India is ensuring that you can sit at your home and work. So for, unless you have a meeting, you may not come to the office. So that redistribution of need of transport, the redistribution of offices, you know, today uh, everybody is going, suppose, towards Gurgaon. Tomorrow, if the infrastructure between Noida and Gurgaon makes a 30-minute travel, then the office will be indifferent whether it is in one end of Gurgaon or the or in Noida. Because even in one end of Gurgaon, you take 30 minutes. That's a win-win situation. That's a win-win situation. So I think there will be a little bit of redistribution. Uh, I don't think prices should rise uh, for that. Maybe some form of... Uh, appreciation will be there, but I don't know, prices of real estate uh, in uh, in the close proximity of this infrastructure will definitely benefit. How does Smart City project reflect the other initiatives of the government? I think all these are overlapping. These all things are overlapping projects. Uh, it's good that they are being done independently. Uh, there are places where they will come in and plug in. Uh, the whole thing about Smart City is about the government to effectively provide the infrastructure and distribute scarce natural resources to the people. So it is just for the people. Just that, you know, it is, it, the government should have done it every time. It, it's, it's a never-ending process. I don't think we are going to see the end of it. If you, if, you, if you actually go and see every year New York does newer, newer regional projects in New York. And you know, you think New York is the smartest city. But they still do, they do decongestion, they do traffic analysis, they change the traffic, they, trans, they, they do a lot of work. And that's a continuous process. No city stops becoming smart. The day you stop becoming smart, you become old.